Welcome to the Hill Stripples podcast with the crew of Harnessed Adrenaline. Harnessed Adrenaline's mission is promoting outdoor recreation through education, conservation, and advocacy. We hope this podcast allows you the opportunity to learn about hunting, fishing, and any other outdoor recreation activity. Welcome back, everybody, to Season 1, Episode 9 of the Hills Ripples Podcast, Lost Walking. Uh, We got Nick and Cookie here from the crew of Harness Adrenaline here to talk with you guys about shed hunting. Yeah, my favorite thing. (laughs) One of my favorite things. Very addictive. Super addictive. And yeah, man, I mean, shed hunting is, uh, has gotten extremely popular over the years. Um, you know, everyone's kind of doing their version of, you know, what they uh, look for and things like that. But we wanted to jump on and just kind of express, you know, why we're out there, um, as well as what we look for, you know, walking in the woods. Um, you know, the, the title explains it all. You're kind of just lost walking. You have to just pick an area and go in and see what you can come out with. Right, Cookie Monster? That's right. And we're the best at getting lost out there, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Champions. <laughs> <laughs> lost without water, without food, without proper clothing, without headlamps. Many lessons uh, learned. Oh, my goodness. It seems like we have to learn, we forcibly have to learn a lesson every single time. And it's usually a different lesson, which is good. We've compiled quite a list now of what we know not to do. Yeah, yeah, that's, that is for sure. You know, so, um, but yeah, I mean, I've been shed hunting for a little while now. Unfortunately, when I was younger, I was always uh, just kind of fed into my mind that sheds don't really matter. They're not as cool as bringing home meat, you know, the old statement, you can't eat antlers. And uh, obviously that's true, but there is something um, that I find just enjoyable and magical about antlers, especially with the last few years, you know, Cookie and I and Taylor have been able to match up um, some amazing bulls, and we've found multiple years off of individual elk, um, and that has actually given us a huge insight to how these bulls grow from year to year, where they winter year to year, and it truly, if you pay attention to the signs, it actually benefits you in the hunting aspect as well, especially for the late season rifle hunts. Um, you know, when I took Charles bow hunting um, down here around me. We actually, I ended up finding a nice six point that was brownie, um, you know, in September. Uh, and we had actually walked the trail that we were hunting on, I think two or three times before I actually noticed it. So that just kind of shows you right there. You literally don't know when you're going to find one most of the time. You know, you could be hunting and all of a sudden walk up on them. And uh, that, will again, gives you insight to what those elk are doing and where they are. Um, but yeah, Cookie Monster, what is your favorite shed hunting moment and what is the thing that you've learned the most from what we've done in the woods Ooh, favorite one oh so and you can't just have the biggest one i was gonna say no there's, three that, there's actually three that come to mind first awesome. one was when uh we went on uh mile cunt the otc and i found my very first one in colorado yeah that was the, the, the mule deer yep um that is, you know, that wasn't the biggest one, but that I think, I think that is my favorite because that is what kicked it off. Yep. Dude. And he um, was high up on the mountain too. I mean, ridiculously way up there. high up. I mean, so, I, was, yeah, I was staring at my feet just, you know, growing up this thing. Cause I was pretty new to the hiking in the, uh, out of the flatlands yep. I mean, coming from Iowa. The, it was quite the, quite the difference on that. So I'm just staring at my feet going up the hill and all of a sudden there's a mule deer antler just and the, the level of excitement was as if I just dropped a six by six bowl. I was going to say, I could still picture the look on your face. Your eyeballs were jumping out of your head and you were smiling I, ear to ear. Didn't, didn't even care if we saw an animal that day. I, I was on cloud nine right there. <laughs> that was, that was a great moment. That was a crazy hunt too, man. That wind was ripping that day. Feeling the trees that we were sitting, sitting against leaning forward about a foot and rocking back. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that was uh, looking down the cliff. <laughs> 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 yeah no doubt well what are the other two uh the the first elk antler the the six yep. point uh matching yep. up the our a crown point yeah that i mean from where we we split up it seemed like i just walked a little bit i looked down the hill 
and there it was just sitting there and i ran to that thing like it was going to take off flying i know Hurtling. man i thought you were going to trip over some of the downfall <laughs> i i think it only took me like five steps to get 100 yards yeah. i mean <laughs> It, it was i was leaping over trees that i didn't think i could jump over yeah no kidding you get a different sense of energy right then huh oh man and, and I, you know i don't even know how far we hiked that day i know we were up up there but that didn't matter at that point i had the level of of a kid with a you know two liter mountain dew yeah it, it, no was, joke. it was it was pretty incredible and for reference that is for sure, the sea people that we kind of talk about on Instagram, and he is a tank. I mean, he's a he's a three forty, three fifty bull. He was actually a six by seven that year. Um, you know, we've picked him up. Uh, actually, Taylor and I matched him up last year as well, but we haven't seen him since. But he is a magnificent bull, heavy beam, long beam, big old tines. I mean, just what you imagine. And he was perfect that year. He wasn't broken. Yeah. He didn't make chips. Yep. It, no, mean, there's not a not a thing wrong with him. No, he is in a heavy, heavy bull. mass. Yep, heavy, heavy. I think the seven point side was nine point seven pounds, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I, mean, I, I, I think bull. you are correct. But was, and then what's number three? Uh, the first elk set on the the du dash. Ah, yeah, that's a great uh, one too. Uh, that was the uh, that was my first elk set. Yep, and that that was a. Uh, that was the other one. I mean, there's a ton of other ones. I mean, all, all the all the other antlers too are, you know, it goes basically four, five, six. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, right, it's hard exactly. to put the, hard to put the number on the other ones, but <laughs> no kidding. Well, and thankfully we got finally got that set mounted for you, and it looks yeah. awesome where it's at. So I'll have to post that picture of how we got it mounted and everything, so the guys can see on the Instagram page at Harnessed Adrenaline. Um, but yeah, that was that was a great day too, man. I mean, geez, Louise, I think that was the only Browns we came out of out with that day because I only found, I think I found a hard white and a couple of chalks, and then that bigger chalky mule deer. So yeah, Cookie Monster. Well, those are some great, great finds and great memories, no doubt. Um, what do you think the biggest thing, the biggest tool you've learned from shed hunting that uh, helps you go forward? Um, game trails. Follow, follow the game trails. Um, that's the, that is one of the biggest, I mean, obviously you got to find the elevation, the areas where they're, where they're going to be. And then once you can kind of get the idea of that, like cover the ground as much as possible, but look for those paths that they like to take. You know, they don't like to, they don't like to go through the blowdown just as much as you do. So if there's, you know, a nice, easy path, you know, hit that, then you can, cover the other stuff later if you if you feel you, the need to i mean i found a lot of antlers that were you know right in between two logs or two two blown down trees that you know where they just go up and knock them off and on their way yep yeah the game trails are definitely huge i mean especially crossing those north slopes the elk aren't just going to mosey especially through the shed season you know in early april late march whatever it may be i mean that snow is heavy in the high country so that is absolutely a great tool to use and utilize. Um, obviously, the sunny slopes are a little hard to do that. But even there, we found what we call the rodeo grounds. And, uh, you know, they just tear it up sometimes. That's kind of a good indicator as well that they're really in there. But right. especially on the north slopes. I mean, you know me, man. I pick up most of my sheds on the north slopes when they're walking and moving. So, Right. And I would say, <clears throat> I think one of my favorites, <clears throat> and like you, I've got a couple. Actually, I've got more than a couple. But... <laughs> I'll kind of keep it brief. One of my favorites was the very first elk shed I ever picked up, um, which actually Maria and I picked up together. And it was a bomber seven point. His um, his burr was 13 and a half inches around. His Jeez. beam is, yeah, his beam is something like 60 inches. Um, I mean, it's just a monster. And the funny thing is, we, uh, you remember where we did that canyon drop off of, uh, that trail that's um, south of uh, where we go in at yeah. where we went down and we got rained out. So I found him yeah. that low. He was down towards the private and I couldn't match him up, could not find the other side to save my life, but it was insane coming up on that thing. Um, you know, like I said, just an awesome antler. Unfortunately, he was a little bit chalky, but that was the first elk shed I ever picked up. And uh, it was right when we moved up here just 
absolutely amazing. Love the memory, love the enjoyment. And that's truly what started firing me up to, Hey man, you can, you can do this. You can walk. So now you just got to figure out where they're at. And then, um, I think, uh, another good one, actually, it's kind of a funny one walk in this Canyon country. And I got to this high spot on this knob and I mean, this stuff is steep and rocky and cactus everywhere. Just not what you would expect elk to be in. And I glassed down, um, across from me on one of the other ridges. And I was like, Oh, there's a little raghorn. Like, you know, let's go pick it up. No big deal. Um, you know, that was again, before, before you and I cookie started hanging out and before Taylor and everything, but walked over to it and uh, it ended up being a seven point as well. And that was a brownie. I mean, I looked at it in the binos probably four or five times while I was moving down to it and just kept telling myself, ah, it's probably a ragger. Let's just go down and pick it up and uh, got up on it. And it was a bomber seven. I mean, just again, big, heavy beam, not as long. Um, You know, he had one broken point, I think, but uh, he actually had a split fifth that made him a seven. Oh, nice. And, um, yeah, it was just, again, awesome. Just you get into a spot where you're just like, man, you kind of start second guessing. You don't really think that the elk are in there that much. You might see a little sign. And then you just come over that ridge and just glass that sucker up. And like you said, it brings a level of excitement that I don't think enough people touch on because – You know, again, you're not taking that home. You're not eating it. You're not chopping it up and throwing it on the barbecue. But, man, it just brings enjoyment to be out there and to to think that you can find more like that, you know. And then um, I think the last one that I have really ingrained in my mind, you know, I would agree is the first time we matched up a bull together, you know, and that was huge. I had gone in, I think a few days before you and picked up the seven, the seven point side and, uh, laying just kind of tucked. It was a little bit above the drainage, uh, but on the sunny side, tucked up a couple of trees and, uh, I was geeked out. I mean, I had the dogs with me and they were, they were smelling it and going crazy. And so I told you, I was like, we need to go back in there. And yeah, I mean, you found that six, probably only like a ridge away. Yeah, and I, I, I think that's what it was, was just like uh, about the same elevation line, but just a, yeah, just a ridge away. Yeah. And I still have those pins marked in Onyx, man. I, <laughs> I have both of those pins. And then I found a, a hard white deer on the way out. That's right. Oh yeah. And he was a good one too. He, he was. Yeah, that's right, dude. That's right. In the craft and shirt. Was, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't even think I had a, I didn't have my backpack that day. I didn't have, I didn't even nope. think I brought a water. I think I was just going out for for a walk with you. So I figured yeah. you'd find it before anything. Oh, before no, I'd ever see that, it. <laughs> and that to me, you know, is huge because you have, again, I can't, I give you, I try to give you so much credit, man. You constantly, I come to you and I'm like, crazy idea, bro. We got to go down into here. We got to go do this. And you're just like, cool. What time are we leaving? What time do I need to meet you? You never... <laughs> have a a question or a doubt you're just like it's an adventure let's do it yeah that's always exciting i mean every time's a a different good story oh yeah absolutely man and i shoot we got a ton now in such a short time the biggest uh learning experience for me personally um you know you kind of touched on it like trails are great they're very important But the biggest learning experience for me is how these winners affect what we're trying to go after. And this year is a perfect example of that. We have gone in to spots that are just normally heavy with antler. Um, Granted, we've been picking up antler in there now. Well, I've been on my, well, you've been on the fourth year basically with me in most of these spots. And uh, we pick them pretty clean. We bring out most of the chalks. um, And then this year with the snow, just so, I mean, it's snowing right now. I mean, it's May, what is it? May 10th, May 9th, May 9th. And yeah, it's still snowing. I mean, I just, and it's throwing me through a loop, but that is also encouragement to show me that there's still some more to learn about where we go in and what these elk do. The pressure has been on people are out in the woods, like mad. Um, you know, I jokingly say scout to hunt kind of messed it up for us because they did that Colorado shed. And so everybody and their mom is in Colorado shed hunting right now. 
but truly it's, it's okay. We, we accept challenges all day long and we get on it and we go after it. And no matter what, we always have a good time, enjoy the moments and just, we end up finding whatever we want, essentially. I mean, as selfish as that sounds, but, um, yeah, I mean, this, there's like, you touched on it just a little bit ago, Cookie. And I thank you so much for reminding me of why we truly do this. It's not about coming out of the woods with these giant elk. It's not about the Instagram um, clout or whatever people want to call it nowadays. That's awesome. We get to share our experiences with people. We get to show them what we pick up. But you have always been a positive person that is just like, I'm out here to enjoy. I'm out here to walk. Getting some exercise. That's it, bro. And we love to get lost. We love to check out new areas and see new places, new views, you know, and it's just, that's, that speaks volumes to me for the type of person that you are, man. Well, I mean, look at the, one of the spots you found where we go, you know, we were out turkey hunting and you happen to see, you know, that little trail and okay, follow. (laughs) And that, yeah, that led to some great spots. I mean, and and access to, I mean, that. And it's yeah. a fun, fun hike. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It always is. And thankfully now we prepare ourselves with water usually. Um, I don't think, you know, what's funny is like everyone is, you know, and I'm not dogging the dehydrated meals and stuff like that. But when you and I, when we get on the mountain, we don't get hungry. We you snack know, a little bit, but. So you give me, give me two Rice Krispies and a, and a beef jerky and I'm, I'm set. I know, right? It's so <laughs> funny. Like that is the best way to lose weight because you will not be snacking. You won't be you know, sitting around on your couch, watching other people hunt and do this and do that. It's just, you get out there, you enjoy the moment and uh, grab a snack along the way. And, and, you know, my, my problem, you know, talking about getting lost, you know, I, if I don't look at, you know, Onyx and stop myself every other hundred feet and hundred yards still looks good. So let's keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going until holy crap, I'm six ridges away. Well, how did I get here? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> no doubt. And uh, this year has been a game changer too with Grail, you know, and I don't know if everyone knows this, but we actually have a discount code for Grail Geo Press, and that thing is tops. It absolutely oh, has. Oh, uh, so awesome. I mean, I got to refill oh. all my water bottles. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, truly, you can Tastes only go out. Clean. You only need to go out with a couple. Oh, man, it's so refreshing. It's 100% just the best way to go, and it just lightens your pack, too. I mean, you don't have to have four or five water bottles. You take two or three and refill. Right. Yeah, you know, right now, you know there's water up there in every single drainage. I mean, that's yeah guaranteed. You can hear it at the bottom. Yep, <laughs> yep exactly. So, yeah, if anyone's interested in Grail Geopress, we highly recommend it for all of your backpacking adventures, camping, hunting, whatever the case may be. Fishing. And we have a dis- fishing, absolutely. And we have a discount code. Um, if you go to grail.com, it's adrenaline20, and that will definitely get you a sweet discount for the G- Grail Geo Press and all the other products that they offer. They got a great titanium one that I can't wait to get my hands on. That one you can actually cook out of. Um, that removes the concept even of the jet boil. I mean, there's just there's so many tools to use out there and utilize, and we're going to start doing it more often. I'm looking forward to the, the hot cocoa for for that fourth cow season. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> but yeah, guys, adrenaline 20 at grail.com. Make sure you guys get one. Um, but yeah, so I think talking about shed hunting, you know, obviously what do we look for when we go into an area? What's kind of our baseline? I mean, obviously you want to try to find what people consider a target rich environment when it comes to hunting. But even for antlers, there are specific spots that those elk like to go. And what do you think you've noticed in the woods of the spots that we get to that the elk love? Um, Aspen bark. That is no lie. They chew on that stuff like crazy, huh? Yep. Yep. I, I think we, even with the snow, they, they know that they can have, you know, the liquids. But with those aspen patches, they, it seems like that keeps them hanging around at least you know no yeah. elk's going to stay in the same exact spot for a month you know they're going to move some but it really seems like it keeps them from wandering as far yep exactly and gives you yeah. you know target areas to 
to check out and see, you know, fresh sign or what, you know, whatever you're looking for at, at whatever time you're in there. Yep. And what I think people don't realize is Aspen's Aspen pockets in general are a great sign of water. They use a ton of water continuously as well as each Aspen tree as it's growing is interconnected with the one next to it. And it's actually considered one of the largest living organisms on this planet is an Aspen grove. And I forget where it is, but because those trees are so interconnected in the root system, um, it's a great sign that there's water. And obviously like you touched on, it's a great sign of a food source when the grass is covered up completely. So, you know, I think people need to, they need to look at the area that they're going into, right? So if let's just say <clears throat> it's kind of hard up on the Northwest cause it's a lot more low land, you know, they, they could be spread out a little bit more, but with as heavy as the winters are, there's still pockets that the elk are going to go to, you know, down here in the Southwest with exception to this year, um, the snow is usually not ridiculously heavy and the animals tend to be a lot higher there. You know, we have found antlers with exception to this year, primarily between like 10 and 10, four, but I have also picked up elk almost all the way up to 10, six. I mean, your deer shed this year, he was close to 10, six. Yeah. Yeah. So he's past the 10, five mark. Yeah. And I mean, granted that's deer. They shed earlier. The winter wasn't as heavy at that point when he probably shed, you know, early March or whatever, but right. that's still kind of, you have to really look at what your, your snow line is doing in your area. The snow line matters tremendously because those elk, they can be up to snow in their belly, but it doesn't mean that they want to live up there. They may travel through, they may drop down. Like you said, they're not going to be in one drainage or on one ridge line for a month while that snow is just dumping on them. They're going to, they're going to move. Right. They're going to make sure they find the water and the food source. But, um, you know, Onyx is a great tool for that. There's so many different layers that you can put on. The biggest layer that I use is the, uh, the winter range or the migration even um, layers. Those are great defining marks because you're going to want to hug that line as much as possible when you go into an area. So, um, and then I think what would, uh, what's your, what I know, I know the six point is a huge memory, but what is, what is kind of a funny moment that we got ourselves into a funny trip, but it was <laughs> almost like during the trip, it was like, uh, what are we doing out here? Well, there's a couple of those. <laughs> um, well, let's hear them. Oh man. Okay. Well, uh, we can go, let's go to the, the first time we were rained out while, while shed hunting. Now I, now I, I can't even remember what we found or if we even found anything that day, <laughs> but I know we dropped, we dropped down in and I remember, you know, me and you sitting under one of the evergreens and a poncho trying yep. to trying to cover up you pull your phone out it gets wet goes black screen yeah. <laughs> we have no references for for you know what's right clouds are moving in i mean and it, it just seemed like it hit all at once like that was i think one of my first real experiences of of the bipolarness of colorado's weather and oh how yeah, it yeah. Turn quickly yeah it hailed I on mean, us it dumped rain for hours I mean, yeah, my screen was, we were only using Onyx on my phone at that time. And yeah, it went black. I was like, all we can do is go across and up. That's the only way I know we can get out of here. And I, I, you know, at that time, I wouldn't even pay attention to where we come in at, where anything is, you know, I'm just, I'm following you around. I'm just going for a walk. And it's like, I have no, re it's like, well, I'm, I gotta, I gotta trust you. If you yeah. got us out, I mean, we, we did make it. <laughs> we I, did. Yeah. We sat, didn't know we how sat far we went or Yep. Yep. I don't know either. I mean, honestly, when I finally got my phone dry and it back on, it acted like we hadn't even gone down there. You know, we sat under that tree for a little while debating if it was going to pass. And then it seemed like it got worse. And then the lightning started and it was just like, no, nah, we got to get out of here now. Yeah. Um, and then there was the second time where we got rained, but that was this <laughs> last, uh, last season when we went and just to go and check pull two cameras and yeah uh, yeah you know, check go, cameras. go in go in go out then you know i separate from you a little bit found that deer shed and then it's like okay well we're gonna we're gonna be shed hunting yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna we're gonna shed hunt then we're gonna and then there was a was it a six point that was, was it 20 yards behind your your first camera 
Yeah, dude, a little six point. And he was, yeah, right behind my camera. And I actually found that before I even found my camera because I got so turned around. Same thing, dumping rain the whole time. M&Ms were just dri dripping in my pocket, soaking wet. <laughs> I say, I, my pants are still stained on the inside. They were, it, That won't wash out from where it, <laughs> those those melted. And <laughs> oh, yeah. And yeah, that that it found the antler first. And I was just, I remember yelling at you. I'm like, I don't even know where my freaking camera is. <laughs> Oh, that was her. Great. Here's an antler, but I can't find my camera. It's like, yeah, huh? yeah. And well, then we shoot. We we found we found two deadheads that day. You, yeah, and I you, think I got you, three brown. Two, I think I found two raghorn. Was it two raghorns or just one other one? I know I on the two. on the trail to go into your second camera. I walked. I walked like ten feet past. I stopped for whatever reason. Turned around and looked down, and there was a broken raghorn just sitting there. Like yeah, well, okay, that's 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 a little different. Then I, oh, I yeah. can't remember if if I found another one or if that was it. I think you had four, and I had two dead heads and one one kind of hard white elk. I think is what Man, we ended dude, up I, having that day. And that dead head was a bomber, dude. That dead head was wide, long tines. I don't know how we all missed him multiple times, multiple years. Well, and then further down the hill was another one that you found. Yeah, that was crazy. That little ragger <laughs> and the yep. drainage. Yeah. Yeah. Just going to check cameras. Yep. <laughs> it got, got rained out, ringing out socks, sitting there in the sun, oh, for, you know, because it, it rained and then it'd be sunny for 30, 30 minutes and then rain again. And yeah, that yeah. was a, that was interesting. I had to get to the walk up the ridge to, to call you because I couldn't get any service yeah. down the bottom. I I know and we got lost. We got lost and dis we dis we didn't con communicate. I didn't communicate properly which direction I was going. I ended up like shoot, probably eight hundred feet up above you by the time we got service to each other. Yep. Um, yeah, I was at the other trail. <laughs> yeah, we had, we both ran out of water. We both ran out of food. We had no ponchos. Like no, nope. uh, no extra socks. No, you know, I've learned to carry a plastic bag. Do the you know the the duck hunting thing. Carry a couple garbage bags and a extra pair of socks and keep your feet feet dry. Didn't do that. And you took all that out. Yep. Yeah, didn't, of didn't course. Need any of that. Just check cameras. Just checking cameras. You don't yeah. need none of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's gonna take. It'll take an hour. And got and back out. to the car and was just smiling our butts off, dude. Oh man, <laughs> it was so great. That was such a great moment. Do you got any, uh, you got another one or is that your the two? Uh, when when we all dropped down, actually I guess there's two times when uh, the first one we met Taylor after he ran into the deer. Oh yeah, his Jeep just Lit set ablaze. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean we dropped down. I don't even remember if it was 1,200 or 1,800 feet in elevation. Then hear from him that that's happening, and he ended up meeting us out there still. It's like yeah, it's like you're. Okay, well, apparently you don't you don't need to hike today. No, I'm gonna go home and grab the woman's car, and I'll be out. It's like holy crap! <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious, bro. And that one too, man. We were covered in in fog and rain for the first two or three hours walking down into there. Yeah, and that was a that was a slippery one. <laughs> yeah, it was, and that was a completely new country to both of us. Yep, I don't think we walked out with anything that day. That was no, just, unfortunately, uh, we didn't. Complete learning experience on that one. Yep, yep. And they I still bear hunt that, that bear, bear oh, hunt did that you? area. Well, I mean, I guess on top of it, but yeah, well, yeah. Up you shot ears. Yeah, <laughs> so you shot ears right above it. Yeah, no. That, <laughs> I mean, it's still. I think that still has something. I just don't know where. Um, you know, I keep telling you about the southern spot that I want to go to, and I. I mean, we'll have to do, but that's going to be a couple overnight <laughs> trip. I mean, you're not walking right. in in a day, so. Right. Um, I think I mapped it. It's where I want to get to is about seven miles um, from where we can park the truck. And uh, yeah, we'll have to go in with tents in nice, probably unfortunately hot weather, but at least we'll be high up. So it won't be terribly hot, but right. uh, that way we don't get rained out the entire time. How far would it be for a hang glider? Could we just not very far. We could parachute in. Oh, that sounds like fun. I'm telling you. Okay, well, we might have to come up with a new crazy plan. Well, and I thought you were going to get the pilot's license so we can get the helicopter going, man. You need a license to buy a helicopter? No, not to buy one, but you need technically a license to fly one. 
Well, I don't think I'll be able to afford the license after I get the helicopter, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It might be a one-time use thing. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. No kidding. Bring a parachute. <laughs> yep. Uh, I think, uh, well, let's see. We've had, we've had so many amazing open days and uh just amazing shed hunts in general i completely agree that the camera day just makes me smile it was like i just had your head filled it was it was just cameras bro it's real quick they're not super far blah 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 um but i mean i kind of blame you you had to find the first one you know that's, that's true that is true so if you hadn't have found the first one we probably would have went in there and not found anything yeah i thought we picked them all up oh that's no lie dude it seems like we have now at this point but um right. yeah that one definitely definitely has a a, a a hold of my memory completely and then um i think man there's just so many good times i your deer shed was absolutely amazing i mean i was you were walking above me we we're walking this ridge line hunting elk and uh, I had kind of seen it just around you and I peeked around. I was just waiting for you to look at it and pick it up. And I was just like, this is going to be his first shed, man. And I should have recorded that moment. But, you know, honestly, in that, there's so many times where we're like, man, we wish we would record that. We wish we recorded that. But instead, it's like, it's a perfect memory for you and I. That I got right. to see your first ever shed pickup on an elk hunt. And, uh, yeah, it was just it was just a glorious moment to be there for that man. That was freaking sweet. That, that was somewhere. There's a picture. I, I know I was ear to ear grinning. Oh yeah, I got it. I, I think I posted to Harness Adrenaline. It's it's back there a ways with all the posts we've been doing recently. Um, I gotcha. But yeah, I I know I still I might even have it on my computer. I'll have to look through some of my old pictures. Um, you know that was that was just amazing, and I love. That's why, you know, like I've shared these spots and I tell, you know, a few people that I trust because I want you guys to go in there and pick them up, man. I want you guys to pick up and enjoy and, and me be able to witness that excitement or hear the excitement come over the radio. I mean, that's just freaking, it geeks me out every time, every time I hear someone go, I got one. <laughs> right. I, I guess another one that I, I sh should share would be uh, when Luke found his first one. Absolutely. I mean, that I mean, that was, uh, I mean, there's not a whole lot of, he, he hides his excitement a lot. He's, you know, one of these kids nowadays that, you know, he's jumping for joy on the inside, but he doesn't want to show it. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, we walking, I think we were walking out even or no, no, not yet. We weren't walking out yet, but you know, we hit a, hit a couple of ridges over and going through this tall grass and he just kind of looks over and it's what's, what's that? And, you know, I walked right past it and didn't even realize it. Yep. And, you know, I, I see like this little fork sticking out. So I start walking up and I recorded that one, you know, but yeah, him picking it up and then he drops it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely not like the most excitable about antlers right now, you know, yeah. but, but I yeah. know he enjoys the time. That, that oh, he's actually, still, wasn't he, that the day that we, that he went in and we ended up doing like 12 and a half miles? Um, was it that day when we, we when we had to I, walk out? I think that was a no. That was a. I mean, that was in the same area, but I thought we went up the drainage instead of. Okay, instead the of the trail. Way. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Because I know the tw when he did that, it was like close to thirteen miles. I mean, that was. I know we did the trail that, and yeah, I was pretty impressed with him on that. Oh man, I was too. He freaking he didn't complain. He didn't whine. He just kept following you the whole way. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I mean, my knees were burning at that point and, but he just, yeah, he kept on trucking. Yeah. That that's awesome. And I love the fact that he's willing to do that with you. And, you know, we've had some great adventures and he's starting to get into the big game thing. Got, you know, got his first antelope. I mean, that's just, that's exactly what you need to do. You need to encourage these kids to get out and enjoy and not be on the freaking video games and the phones the entire time. Golly, man. Right. <clears throat> well, uh, truly there's just been so many moments and, um, touching back on, you know, again, what people need to look for. It's, you know, 
it's got to be your snow line for your area. It's got to be what their food source is going to be, if they're going to be able to get water. And, you know, like I said, pressure right now is on. We are seeing it tremendously. There's people out that, you know, haven't been out before, which is great. That's obviously what we want. And it just, it, it motivates me, you know, and I know it motivates you. It's like, where do we go further? How do we get away from people? How do we find those pockets that, truly haven't been hit yet because there are still pockets. I truly believe there are places we can go that people are just too scared to get into. And you've proven that with, you know, we find, uh, you know, big hard whites or chalkies, you know, ones that, yeah. you know, it's that, that's the proof right there. You are 100% correct. Yeah. It's just about how willing you are. And I mean, I've been, I am very blessed that I have you and some other people in my life that push me continuously and are willing to do it. No questions asked. And I have pushed myself tremendously this year, especially. I mean, I was 2.2 miles away from having a 14 mile day. And uh, that just excites me. That, that just tells me how much stronger we've gotten. I mean, I tell you all the time, bro, from the first time I met you when we did that summit. And uh, mm-hmm. now I'm like, dang, bro, look at you. You're a freaking beast, bro. Just hammering that country. pounds less. <laughs> oh man, hammering that country. We're both. We're we're bosses on the mountain, man, and we know how to get in there and get work done. And uh, it's so enjoyable. I love it tremendously. So, um, anyone interested in shed hunting, you know, obviously we are not going to give you our spots. I'm not going to send you a pin of where I'm going in at, where Cookie goes in at, you know. But feel free. You get, reach out ask us some questions, send me a picture of kind of the country you're looking at, or even just a general idea of where you live. And I'll, I'll be willing to share some information about that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to send you a pin. I don't want you to send me pins. Um, you know, those, those need to be your spots. You need to enjoy them, but I'm absolutely 100% willing to try to help people break down the country that they're in and what they're looking for. I need to figure out the mule deer stuff, man. I don't get it. I've picked up my biggest brown mule deer shed this year in uh, when I was out with KC in an area we don't shed hunt truly. I mean, I took I took you in there last year when we were meeting up with Keith and Ryan. Um, and actually Taylor was with us too. And then Taylor went back in and found a good deer shed, but we didn't we haven't done good in that country. And go figure, KC picks up a sweet six brown, nice heavy oh, yeah. bases, just like we always get. And then uh, I picked up a bomber, my biggest mule deer, my biggest brown mule deer ever. Um, so we'll be going back in there here pretty soon if this weather can figure out what it's trying to do consistently. But Good. Um, Good luck yeah, with that. <laughs> I know. No kidding. Right. Colorado. Got to love it. Yeah. But yeah. Guys, four, seriously. Huh? I said all four seasons in one one hour. <laughs> one hour. One hour, dude. And the wind rips and everything. So be prepared. That's definitely another touch on is uh you know especially come late in it later in the summer have water make sure you got electrolytes something to keep you going wilderness athlete has been great um obviously mountain ops is always great there's there's uh there's things you have to have in your bag but it doesn't need to be you know these crazy oh i need this i need that you know we we do it pretty minimal and maybe sometimes that's a bad thing but uh at the same time we always come out of the woods. I told your wife the other day, I was like, I, she, she hit me up. She's like, you destroyed Ryan. He can't even move. And I was just like, he's still in one piece. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I send you home in one piece. Everything else, I don't guarantee. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, get out, enjoy the woods, be safe, choose, uh, you know, some spots that you want to look at and yeah, hit us up, hit Ryan up. Ryan's definitely got some good tools to use. Hit me up about shed hunting. There's still a lot of country to cover. And, uh, like I said before, I completely agree and, uh, believe that they cannot find them all. And I will say that until I'm six feet under. (laughs) Amen, brother. That's it, it, man. But yeah, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate all the support we get. Make sure to follow us at, at Harness Adrenaline. Follow us on Facebook, Harness Adrenaline. Check out the website, www.harnessadrenaline.com. You know, the, the, the podcast is up on what? Spotify, Apple. It's everywhere, isn't it, Lane? It's Spotify, Apple, Google, um, on YouTube. If you go to our YouTube page, Harness Adrenaline, it's 
they're on there every week. So feel free to yeah. check it out. Check it out. And I ask everyone that is listening to go check out the podcast I was on with the okayest hunters. Those dudes are awesome. And it was such a blast being able to be on there and talk about what's going on in Colorado legislation wise and just talk about what I love and enjoy. So I appreciate those guys for having me on. That was a huge moment for me personally. And uh, we are not done. We are going to keep rolling. So thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, make sure you comment, subscribe, and let us know what you guys think on all of our outlets. I got one thing. Yep. Let me see your first shed. Send us a picture. Oh, yeah. Send us pictures. First sheds. Let's go. Let's get that going. I love that cookie monster. I, I want to see what they got. Yep. Absolutely. I like I it. See, We're going to see that excitement. Heck, yeah. I'm going to do a post right now about that, too. First shed pickup. Let's go. I love it, boys. And keep... Keep on keeping and get after it. Get after it. Mm.